morning everyone and welcome back to another video on my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jen and for the last couple of years I've been making videos all about books and my love of reading. This year I also became a mum for the first time to my daughter Ivy. She was born in January and so she's currently about nine months old. I thought that today I would do a little bit of a sit down chatty video about reading as a mum. I want to talk about how reading has changed for me, how differently I read now, how much I read now, and also how that has evolved over the last nine months of being a mum. This is my second cup of tea of the day. I normally have one as soon as I wake up and then once Ivy goes down for her first nap over the day, I make myself another cup of tea and usually I do a chore um, around the house that needs to get done. But today I just wanted to sit down and make this video and do something a little bit more relaxing because I find these sit down chatty videos where I'm not really having to move around much in the video. I find these really calming and relaxing to do. I also find them really calming or relaxing to watch. So if you've had a busy morning or a busy day, go and grab yourself a comforting warm drink and I hope that you enjoy watching this video. So let's backtrack to what reading looked like for me prior to having a baby. I used to average about a book a week when it came to reading. So around 50 books a year. It wouldn't always be exactly 50, sometimes it might be 47 or something like that but on average I would say I my reading speed was about a book a week. I worked but I would use evenings and weekends as my reading time and really even though there were busy seasons of my life the weekends generally were my own and so I could always find some quiet time on a weekend to read through a book and so I could normally read a book a week. Last year that actually dropped to around 30 books. I was pregnant that year and I found myself so tired and my concentration was so bad <laughs> that I couldn't concentrate on books in the same way. I mean, 30 books in a year when your concentration and your energy levels are low and your sickness levels are high is still pretty good. But for me, that was a lower amount. So then going into 2024, Ivy was due on the 18th of January. She arrived on the 17th of January. So I knew going into 2024 that I was going to be reading a lot less and so I set myself a goal of 30 books again um, because that felt manageable last year. I can't actually remember currently how many books I'm on. I really should have. I'm gonna go and double check. So I have currently read 20 books so far this year, which of my 32 book reading goal means I'm five books behind. If I'm honest, I don't know if I am going to finish 10 books between now and the end of the year. Um, I reckon this is probably gonna end up being a 25 book reading year. I just wanna say now, 25 books in a year is still really good. That's two books a month. So let's talk about the newborn stage. For those first few weeks, I don't think I read a single book. If I'm honest, I was so sleep deprived, so tired, and also just so in love with her beautiful girl that the thought of reading was just not even there. It didn't really even factor in as something that I wanted to do for a few weeks. Also having Johnny at home whilst he had paternity leave meant that we were spending that quality time together. So for those first few weeks that felt really natural and normal to not be reading. As it got I would say a month in I then started to really miss reading and I do remember around a month in feeling that kind of frustration that if I try to open a book, I might read two pages and then I would have to put it down. As somebody who is very much an introvert, 
resting is something that has always happened for me on my own and having a baby has made me realize that resting cannot always be something I do on my own and that actually having a family is learning to rest together and also to find rest in the mundane everyday tasks as well but I am fast forwarding let me go back I ended up finding little windows of time to get slightly more reading done and that was usually when I was nursing Ivy um, so when she was feeding in the beginning those feeding sessions might last about half an hour and I started to be able to read during those sessions once we'd kind of established how breastfeeding worked and how that looked for us and once it was starting to feel a bit easier I was able to have um, my kindle on the side um, I, I did try with a physical book, but that was very hard whilst you're holding a baby and trying to hold a book. Um, I found that having an e-reader in that moment was definitely very helpful. The other thing that really helped, which is something that I never really did before having a baby, is listening to audiobooks. I was never an audiobook girl. I have tried audiobooks many times in my life and I've always felt like my enjoyment of the story was hindered by listening to it rather than reading it but there was one night in particular where I was up quite a lot in the night and I really wanted to read but I couldn't read in the dark <laughs> um, and I didn't want to even add the light of reading on the screen so I just downloaded the book that I was currently reading at the time as an audiobook put my headphones on and let myself listen to this story and it was like this switch came on in my head of I can enjoy an audiobook I've just never been in a situation where I've needed one before from there I would grab my headphones and go for a walk with Ivy in the pram for like half an hour sometimes an hour listen to a couple of chapters in an audiobook and for quite a while that is how reading actually looked. I wasn't reading physically very much but I was listening to books and when I say that my reading has changed a lot over the last year I think that that is a big part of why because when you are listening to a book it feels like a very, at least to me, it feels like a very different activity to reading it physically because you I feel like you're engaging a different part of your brain I'm much more of a visual person um where I or a, I can't remember what the word is kinesthetic I think where you have to do something to learn I'm very much visual and do like I have to be doing something and see something to learn it I don't learn very well by listening to something and so in order for me to enjoy listening to an audiobook, I really had to um, start connecting to the story in a different way and be really intentional about listening and remove all of the other distractions around me, which was why going on a walk with an audiobook just felt like the perfect thing. Ivy would have her nap, I would have my book on, it would be calm around me and it was just a really nice activity and it felt like a hobby. It felt like I was doing something that was enjoyable, not that I was trying to just get pages read. In the last, I wanna say three months, maybe around the six month mark, she started to have a, a reasonably early bedtime routine. Um, she'd always gone to sleep at around 10, 11 p.m. Around the six month mark, she started to go to sleep more around 7, 8 p.m., which has given me a little bit of an evening. And I feel like I have recently been reclaiming my evening bedtime reading routine a little bit more. So I've been able to read a few pages to kind of fall asleep to, which is something I always used to do. Um, but through that kind of early motherhood transition, I was so tired when I got to bed that, you know, I'd be lucky if I read one page and didn't fall asleep. 
Whereas now I feel like because we've had this sort of established earlier bedtime for Ivy, I have been able to fit in a little bit of reading time for myself before I go to bed. Normally about half an hour to an hour before I go to bed, I will do some reading. And so that is currently still what my reading looks like. I have about an hour in the evening of reading and then I might also have an audiobook on the go. And then I've also started trying to have some kind of non-fiction book on the go and read this alongside my Bible when I have quiet time in the mornings, which is very much a current challenge and something I'm really trying to develop into my routine. But on the days where I've been able to have a decent night's sleep, and I've been able to wake up in the morning and Ivy is still asleep. I have been really trying to make the effort to come downstairs, read my Bible. And currently I'm reading a book, which is like a long commentary on the book of Jonah in the Bible. Um, but I want to start reading more um, nonfiction, specifically Christian related books as part of my kind of Bible prayer quiet time in the morning. And I really enjoy that. That is a way I really engage with God, a way that I really engage my faith. And I've been really enjoying reclaiming that a little bit. So that is currently what reading looks like for me. And in that reading has of course been a lot slower, but also the kind of books that I have been picking up have been very different. I think because I've been only able to read in shorter stints, not just to sit down and read a whole book in one go, I've been much more enjoying books that take a little bit more time to get into and also books that I would naturally want to put down after a short amount of reading which means that I have been reading and enjoying a lot more classics recently so I'm currently reading The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte and I am loving it so much and I think that if it was the kind of book I read in one weekend and just had to get through the whole thing because I wanted to get through a book that week. I would have enjoyed it so much less than I have reading it in small amounts and really absorbing the writing. Um, because a lot of the story feels quite repetitive, but because I'm reading it slowly and taking my time with it, I'm finding that it's really deepening the story. I always used to read about a page a minute, um, but I might only read 20 pages in an hour some evenings and I've just been learning to not race ahead in the book, not to try and fast read or skim read or on audiobooks, not to put it on three times speed so that I can get through it quicker. Um, but to just take things slowly, to listen to an audiobook on the normal speed, to read a page and then reread it if I want, if I want to, and to highlight and to put sticky notes in and to just really absorb the book that I'm reading. I have been loving it. I feel like I'm getting so much more from what I'm reading. I feel like I could tell you so much more about the books I'm reading than I ever did before. And so even though I am reading less, I feel like more of a reader than I ever have before. I'm gonna end the video there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed hearing a little bit about my reading and what that's looked like for me over the last few months. I hope you're doing really well and that you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you very soon with another video.